Welcome to Introduction to Sub-D Modeling, Part 3. This is John Hartigan. We're going to pick up where we left off with our little monster and begin to make some arms for him. And in this session, we're going to use all the same Sub-D tools that we've already used, so hopefully this will be something of a review for you. So let's start by going to the front view. And we can see that this edge probably isn't lined up to this arm, so let's move that down. We'll pick that edge loop and transform it in the Z. Right about there. Okay, and we're going to need some more definition here so that we can pull an arm out. So I'm going to insert an edge loop uh, with my favorites perpendicular and edge flow. And we'll move that up about there. And I'll transform and scale that in the Z so that it's relatively horizontal. And I'll pull that down a little bit. There we go. Now we have two patches here that I'm going to use to extrude the arm. So let's go to Sub-D Extrude, Normal, Sub-Div Faces, select that one, and this one, I'll go back to a front view. I like to work in orthographic views, but that's just a preference. And we'll pull that out, and maybe I'll rotate it a little bit, uh, maybe move it up a bit, and a little scale. There we go. I'll hit the space bar to extrude again, and I'm going to grab this green patch here so that we can just move in that plane. I'll pull him up right about there. That looks pretty good. So now we've got to make some fingers. And to do so, you might think, well, I'll just insert an edge loop here. And we can do that. But, you know, it adds more complexity through the rest of the model that I don't think we need. I think we can do just fine by moving some edges around. So I'm going to select these edges here. To a front view and transform and I'm just going to kind of slide those down there and then these here I'm going to go to box mode because sometimes that's easier to see an edge and it's also very helpful when modeling sometimes when you're in multicolor you can have uh, vertices that crisscross over one another and you don't realize it until you go to box mode and you can see the nice topology here so I'm going to grab this edge now back to the front view and I'll put that back in multicolor smooth and let's transform those up here right about there okay and I think I can see that this vertice here is just a little bit out of shape so I'm gonna go to a top view to see that and I'm gonna transform that in in effect I'm gonna yep that looks good all right let's go ahead and make some fingers so to do that, I'm going to go back again to box mode so that I can see these faces a lot easier. And I'm just going to go to extrude and pick this face and this one. And back to the front. Let's go back to smooth. And I'll pull those out. I'm going to scale those in a little bit. A oh, little touchy there. Okay, and back to box mode. And I'm going to select this face. In this face front and smooth and let's pull those out there we go and I'm gonna pull that over a little bit maybe down and of course we've got a lot of work yet to do in fine-tuning this but this is a good start and I can see right away that our hand looks a lot wider than I'd like it I know we don't have a side view image to go by but I'm just going to take these vertices and scale them in. Something like that. There we go. And I don't think I like this shape that's going on here, so I'm just going to pull that out. Maybe go the other direction with it. Okay. Let's go back to our front view. And we'll just start pushing and pulling here and try to get this into shape. I'm not going to do too much fine-tuning because, again, I'm going to do that later and not waste your time. And you can just pick up the model and run with it. These, I think I'm going to scale these in a little bit. This way. 
pull that up. There we go. And back to box mode so we can see what's going on here. And I'm going to grab these edges and pull those down a bit. There we go. Now we're getting a lot closer. And finally, let's go back to box mode to see what we're selecting. And again, I can see this. Well, I guess that looks all right. Let's grab these faces here. Smooth mode. Transform those over here. Oops, picking faces, not vertices. I'll just move these in a little bit there. Okay, I'm going to call that good, uh, but of course, you probably want to fine tune that a little bit more. Now, I could just start modeling on the other side because this model is asymmetrical, but remember we have symmetrical modeling on, and if I go ahead and try to move these, we're going to move the other side as well. So to fix that, I'll select the model or object and I'll go to delete, delete construction history and say yes. Now there's no more symmetrical, symmetrical modeling going on and I can now grab some of these vertices. I'll shift to get these and I'm going to transform these around generally where I want them and I'll pick these. Just getting them close. This guy looks like he needs to move out a little bit. And maybe this one too. Ah, that's what I missed right there. That guy. Again, sometimes box mode would show me where that point was and be a lot easier. position and again need more fine-tuning here but this you get the idea so now what we're going to do is the, use the crease tool because you can see from the image that we have a sharp corner here here and here so with the crease tool we can accomplish that I'll go back to box mode and I can select all the edges and do it all at once so that's what I'm going to do I'll grab this edge this edge here oops these guys. This one. Then I'll go to the other side. Do the same thing. I don't know if I got that. Yep, looks like I did. And now we'll grab around the arm. Go. Let's go back to more of a front view and smooth. And now I'll hit the crease tool. And there we go. We've got our nice creases in there. And then from there, we can continue to do more adjusting. You can grab the, the vertices of this crease. And I got one in there that I didn't want. And I can continue to move those around just like anything else. And everything goes along with it. So there we have it. We have some arms on our monster, and uh, we used really all the same tools we've used before in Sub-D, uh, insert an edge loop, extrude, and then we've transformed CVs and added a crease. So in the next video, we'll uh, give this guy some horns. Thanks for watching.